Howdy peeps, it's the Pink King here. And yeah, what you just watched did actually happen. Now, you only had one of two reactions from that. Either, what was that? Or the second one, where have I seen that before? Well peeps, this is where I ask you the question. Do you remember Dinosaur King? I'm fast as fuck, boy. I don't think you have any idea how fast I really am. I'm fast as fuck, boy. Yeah, Dinosaur King. Starting out as an arcade game created by Sega, this has got to be one of the most bizarre franchises, especially considering that just like a lot of other franchises out there, it was made to cash in on the Pokemon hype. Despite it being a Pokemon clone, you might call it, it's actually pretty different in not only what it has to offer, but also its success, as the series actually managed to do really well in countries like Japan, Korea, and the place I'm from, the UK. Well enough to not only get a DS port, but also its own anime that managed to go on for two seasons. But let me just start off with my personal experiences with this franchise. I and surprisingly many other kids grew up with the anime, watching it on 4Kids whenever an episode was airing or any uploads of the series to YouTube. Ah, the early 2010s. I'll be honest, after I got older, I never really tended to think about this show as I did with, the other, with other ones that I saw when I was younger but it never really left me either. I and many others got a huge fascination with dinosaurs in general because of this show, and having come back to it, it's so interesting to see what people's thoughts are on this show, hence why I'm making a video about it. Despite this franchise starting off as a game, most people remember its anime that was initially created by Sunrise Animation, and first airing in 2007. This show was a sort of sleeper hit, you could say, with the show doing fairly good on the rating side with it just like Pokemon making most of its success from the products looks like toys or cards, although honestly, that's pretty much where the ties to Pokemon end, as this show had its own style, even though when you look at it on the surface, it looks a lot like Pokemon. So, what was the anime about? It was about the D-Team, with three characters in particular, Max, the cocky leader, Rex, the shy, mysterious kid, and Zoe, the smarter, light-hearted one with these three getting cards that when put together with their elemental stones would summon dinosaurs, and they would use these dinosaurs to fight the Alpha Gang, who are time travellers who share a history with Rex, who are out to capture every loose dinosaur, with the show being a race to see who can get all the dinosaurs first and who will become the Dinosaur King, with along the way there being plot twists and betrayals and a lot of action. Yeah, this show was not subtle at all with what it was about, and you could see why there was a clear appeal to this show. A fun story that served the episodic formula very well, mixed with epic dinosaur fights with, with powers. How could a kid say no? One of the things that drew people to the show was the art style, funny enough, as although the characters were typical cutesy anime style, the dinosaurs themselves were CGI, with this being one of the few shows in the early 2000s that used a blend between traditional and 3D animation. Something that's rather controversial in the anime world. And is here something that was still in its infancy. This show, although despite it being dated, it never hurts the show in any way. And if anything, is a good thing, whereas in other animes, Doing something like this could be distracting, but here, it kind of works to the show's favour a little bit. It allows the dinosaurs to stand out much more on their own and feel otherworldly, while also allowing for a lot of action and, well, whatever crazy ideas they could come up with to be properly executed with. Speaking of crazy, this show was not afraid to get weird. 
as in its second season, they fully embrace the time traveling aspect, as now instead of a race to collect all the dinosaurs, it's a MacGuffin quest now for seven Cosmo Stones that hold great power. And instead of the Alpha Gang, they had to take on Space Pirates, who also kidnapped the D-Team's parents as well for extra motivation, if saving the universe wasn't already motivation enough. My point being, this show was bizarre, as it really had a lot of fun with its creativity, constantly moving forward in a way to top the next. Hell, how would you even get cooler than dinosaurs with superpowers, who also have elemental armor? Now, in doing research for this video, I of course had to rewatch the entire show to gauge whether or not the show was actually good or not, or if my nostalgia had been messing with my memory of it. And after watching both seasons, I have to say, this is not some sort of lost gem. The show, in all honesty, is not very good. A lot of the characters are underdeveloped alongside the fact that there's probably too many of them. There's so many characters here that it's hard to keep track of. Although, there are definitely highlights. With them being Dr. Z, Helga, and Seth, with Seth being my favourite character out of the entire show, he starts out as just another background character to eventually evolving into a serious villain, who actually is really entertaining with how he executes his plans while also being a conniving genius. It's honestly such a treat to watch and see his plan unfold as it goes along. With Helga and Dr. Z, they're pretty much just caricatures, but they're so over the top that you can't help but love them, as they just chew up the screen whenever they're seen. But with the others, they're either just okay, or not rememberable at all. There's rarely a character who's bad, I could say. Surprisingly, despite the show being called Dinosaur King, the idea of being Dinosaur King is never really explained, it's only mentioned here and there by Dr. Z, but it's never explained or ha ha explained how or why Dr. Z wants to become the Dinosaur King and what happens if he does. Yeah, this show's not very good at going into depth with things. It has all the cool elements and ideas, but they never really explore those ideas. Enough mostly, going for quantity rather than quality. Although there are some really good episodes, like Escape from Zeta Point 2-parter, Rhino or Dino, Daddy Dearest, and the 4-parter finale, all these episodes use the concept really well and manage to be quite memorable and entertaining. One thing I wish they did more of though was the power dynamics, as in I wish that they would constantly shift who was winning and who wasn't. Sure, they'll have some episodes where the Alpha Gang may win, but I wish it was more of a 50-50, because most episodes do just stick with the same formula, where the D-Team wins and honestly I wish they kept a more diverse set of outcomes so the villains could feel much more of a threat rather than just a nuisance. This was something that they actually improved upon in the second season, however, that had its, had more issues that I could spend all day going over, so I'm not going to waste your time here. Because this show actually wasn't that good, <laughs> as much as my nostalgia wants, to, wants me to believe, but I still enjoyed it. It was so much fun to go down memory lane and experience all the nostalgia again, and yes, that's what it is, nostalgia, but honestly, in terms of quality, it's more of a 5 to 6 out of 10. Not the worst thing ever, but not the best either. Now, despite the series' relative success, it's now a dead IP. One that's now been abandoned for over a decade now, with the show being cancelled in 2010 after season 2. 
Now, there's no definitive answer, but I have a theory as to what happened based off my research. This show was not doing well in the ratings by season 2. Alongside the large costs to make multiple episodes with CGI dinosaurs, this show was most likely not making a profit, but worthwhile enough for the series to go on. With toy sales and card sales dropping dramatically, as people just lost interest over time, with a big factor of that being the show was offering too much and too little, with it throwing all these ideas, stories, and just world building out there but not giving enough development to make them interesting. They massively overshot what they were able to do, and simply put out too much with not enough matching interest. And so, shortly, the show's ambition to get everything out there to promote their toys and cards ultimately was the thing that killed it. But now I ask you, yes, you, the viewer, do you remember Dinosaur King? Because me personally, I actually do. To me, this is one of those series that deserves a remake about it, as there's so much potential and creativity here, that if given to the right people, it would definitely help make it a new hit. And seeing as Pokemon competitors like Power World are able to compete, you could say, with Pokemon Now, who's to say Dinosaur King couldn't do the same? Hell, it could almost be a repeat of Power World, whereas Power World showed the lackluster the games were, Dinosaur King could show how lackluster the shows were also. There's a lot that could be done here, and I hope that one day someone fully realises the potential this series had. But what do you think? Do you remember Dinosaur King? Did you like it? Let me know in the comments, and I will see you all next time.